don't we want all of God, everything God promised we would receive? Happy Pentecost Sunday. I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the Word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, for this Pentecost celebration, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross. And thank you for the Holy Spirit living in us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was raised in the Pentecostal tradition. And we had tarry service every week. <laughs> in Luke chapter 2, verse 49, in the King James Version, that is, or the New King James Version, Jesus tells the, the disciples to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until they are filled with the power from on high. The word tarry means to wait. So during tarry service when I was growing up, children, teens, and adults prayed together on their knees. We all prayed at the altar, asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The mothers of the church stood around us and prayed with us, listening to hear when someone might be speaking in tongues. Well, I prayed week after week, year after year. One day in testimony service, I stood and I said, I am not returning to church ever again because I'm tired of asking God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I sat back down. Well, this was a major announcement because my father was the pastor and he had invited a visiting preacher that day. Well, this young preacher stood at the pulpit and after his regular greetings, he looked at me and said, I didn't have to ask God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift and God promised that we would receive him. What do we say when someone gives us a gift? We say, thank you and receive it. So a light bulb went off in my head and I said, thank you, as I looked at him. And then I kept saying, thank you to God and hallelujah out loud while he was preaching. Oh my goodness. So during his message, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. And we're going to talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in today's Bible study guide from Acts chapter two, verses one through 13. We'll look into the mirror of God's Word by discussing what's important to know, cognitive, feel, effective, and do, psychomotor. Let's begin our lesson with our first set of verses from Acts chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. The key point is one place. In the Old Testament, the prophet Joel prophesied that God would pour out the Holy Spirit on everyone, men and women alike. And we read that in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. This is what Jesus promised before he ascended into heaven from the Mount of Olivet. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that was in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The apostles and disciples waited in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. This background and context help us better understand today's lesson so we can apply God's Word to our lives. Well, in this scripture that we're reading today, the big picture is this. All believers received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. In the book of Acts, Luke 
the beloved physician and the author of the book of Luke, continues writing about the life of Christ and the spread of Christianity from Jerusalem to Rome. The church began during the Pentecost celebration, which was also called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of First Fruits. All Jewish men were required to be in Jerusalem for this annual celebration of the first budding of crops at harvest time. Pentecost is significant because the apostles and the women, along with other believers in the upper room, 120 altogether, were the first fruits of a vast harvest of millions of souls. As they were together in one place, and on one accord, as it says in the New King James Version, the Holy Spirit arrived sounding like a strong gush of wind. It was a sound so loud that everyone heard him. People in the surrounding area also heard the sound and they ran to see what was happening. There was also visible evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in what appeared to be like individual flames on each of their heads. This was not fire that burned. Mm -mm. These flames remind us of the burning bush from which God spoke to Moses. And we read about that in Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. In both cases, the unquenchable flames represent the Spirit of God. At Pentecost, the flames represented God's Spirit filling the followers of Jesus. Let's read our next set of verses from Acts chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, and again, New Living Translation. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. The key point is other languages. When the followers of Jesus were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in other languages. This occurred while Jewish people were in Jerusalem from as many as 16 different nations, as we're about to read in our final set of verses from Acts chapter 2, verse 6 through 13, again, New Living Translation. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the area of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Jerusalem, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Oh my. <laughs> the key point is our own language. The Jewish travelers ran to the building to hear what was happening, and they were shocked because they heard wonderful things spoken about God in their own language. But how could people from Galilee who didn't speak their language proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in languages different than their own? The, the disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel to the Jewish nations in languages everyone could understand. Some folks in the crowd mocked or made fun of the believers saying they were drunk, 
even though it was only three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my, they weren't drunk. <laughs> well, that's what we should know. How should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should feel appreciation for Pentecost. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit was a power-filled, supernatural celebration that marked the beginning of the spreading of the gospel. During this season, we remember and we appreciate that God keeps His promise. And we celebrate this time of first fruits that has resulted in millions of people being saved. That's how we should feel. What should we do with what we've just learned? We should commit to spreading the gospel. And it doesn't get any more simple than that. The outpouring of God's own precious spirit is supernatural. It's beyond our intellectual understanding. There are many different teachings about being filled with the spirit, but that's not what we're going to discuss here. <laughs> God says we need his power to be his witnesses, and that's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Are we his witnesses? Do we need his power to tell others the good news that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, was born of a virgin, healed the sick and raised the dead, took on the sin of the world by shedding his blood on Calvary, and on the third day was raised from the dead with all power in his hand? Everyone who believes in Jesus will be forgiven of their sins and live eternally with God. And that's the gospel. Are we telling everyone about Jesus? That's our scripture made simple. Do you remember our key points? One place, other languages, our own language. On the day of Pentecost, the promise of the Holy Spirit was realized when the believers of Jesus were filled with power from on high. They spoke with other tongues or in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak and the gospel was proclaimed to people from the surrounding nations. This was the beginning of witnesses who spread the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, or the end of the earth. <laughs> we are beneficiaries of hearing and believing this good news. Hallelujah. It's been my honor to share with you today. For additional resources that will help you as you study or teach, I invite you to subscribe to PreceptsDigital.com. You'll find my lesson plan and special teaching tips, the word made simple and so much more. And you'll connect with a community of believers who are growing as they study God's word together. I look forward to seeing you at PreceptsDigital.com. Let's close the lesson with our keep in mind verse from Acts chapter 2, verse 4, New Living Translation. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And that's Acts chapter 2, verse 4, New Living Translation. Child of God, with the Holy Spirit within us, we have the power of God to be witnesses of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Have a great week.